so, uh, what, what is swordfish? Uh, how many people in here have heard of swordfish before today or before this week? Wow, that's, okay, Morali, you put your hand down. Uh, how many people not involved in developing swordfish have heard of swordfish before this week? Okay, that's better. Uh, <laughs> all right, so what we're going to cover here a little bit is, is talking about, you know, where swordfish came from, uh, what's the genesis for it, and then a little bit uh, overview of kind of what the concepts are, how we've developed it, and who's involved in building it. So, and then obviously questions. Um, so, who basically, uh, obviously, uh, you guys all, all read this already, right? So, that, and as Mark just said, the SNEA's Scalable Storage Management Technical Workgroup is de has been developing uh, the Swordfish uh, specification. We actually announced the release on Monday. Uh, and uh, sorry, a little bit of tiny little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, one of the things you're, that you get an opportunity to do for sitting in and listening to this presentation today is a chance to register to win a Phantom 3 drone. And if I just like perked up and got really animated at the thought of a Phantom 3 drone, it's because I have one of these and they're awesome. So, so um, I'm a true nerd. Um, so Don and Mark and Arnold are passing out uh, your uh, what you need to do to uh, register for these. It's going to be an online registration, so no need to be present to win. Your presence here is your, uh, is your, is your uh, present to win part. Uh, so get, if you don't have a ticket, you know, wave your hand and, and uh, make sure you get your ticket so you, and then you go online and register to win. Um, but they're really, really fun. You do have to register them with the FFA, FFA, FAA and oh. Uh, you don't need to register with, with the future farmers of America, though. Um, anyway, so what sort back back to our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, so what Swordfish is, uh, and what the the technical work group we were formed uh, about nine months ago uh, to to start and and define the Swordfish specification. We released version 1.0 on Monday. Um, and so I'll kind of re start that. We, we start that again and repeat that again for you. Uh, we formed this twig nine months ago and released the spec on Monday. So let's kind of go through the history of that. Uh, one key thing, disclaimer slide, every, I'm sl sure everyone has seen a variant of this disclaimer slide before. Uh, but note on here, snea.org slash swordfish. So if you don't remember anything else, uh, remember snea.org slash swordfish. So that's where you can go to find all any and all pertinent information from today and moving forward. Okay. <clears throat> so what are the drivers for swordfish? Um, so over the last uh, several years, we've, we've obviously had storage management standards for quite a while. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with SMIS. Um, and that's actually been a really good standard for managing enterprise class storage, uh, SANS. It's been extremely widely adopted. And, but there have obviously been some things we needed to work on for that. We've had a lot of feedback from customers and vendors alike on things that we need to think about in terms of you know, not just SMIS, but storage management standards in general. So things like, you know, make them easier to implement and consume. Um, so from the implementation side, uh, you know, uh, the technologies we picked are, um, require a lot of, you know, um, very, specify, very specific knowledge. Um, they're not used broadly. Uh, and that's true for both the implementation side and the consumption side. Um, it's, it's got a high learning curve. So, you know, what can we do to simplify that? Um, improve access efficiency. So one of the things that we've done in the past is we've basically defined standards largely driven by vendors. Um, and by vendors, I mean the people that build storage hardware and storage infrastructure, um, more so than clients. And the clients are you know, the people that use it, right? Either the storage applications or the direct end users. Um, and so when you build things from the vendor perspective, what you get is look at all my neat knobs and widgets and look at every feature that I, that I build. And so you don't think about, you know, necessarily, I want to look at this particular attribute of this system a thousand times. Um, and so 
what we've gotten is a lot of feedback over the years to say, I want to look at this particular attribute. So we've had to do a lot of refinement. So we've done that in the current uh, systems. But we, what we need to do is actually, when you're doing a new standard, um, build that in from scratch. Uh, so that's where improving access efficiency comes in. Um, the third and fifth ones kind of go together. Uh, <clears throat> providing useful access via standard browser and, and using standard tools. Right? It's very hard in not just SMIS, but in a lot of other standards, uh, legacy standards, um, uh, particularly even in the server space, to use them directly. Um, so if you look at a lot of the tools people use in, uh, like DevOps people use directly in, in their day-to-day -day work, you can't actually interact directly with the tools. Um, and so those are a lot of the feedback we've gotten over the years. Uh, another thing is just a, rapid, a shift in where storage is deployed. You know, five, 10 years ago, you had DAS, you had SAN, but what we've seen is a rapid transition to including converged, hyper-converged, hyperscale environments, and the standards really haven't kept up with that. So those are a lot of the, the areas of feedback we've gotten to say what can we do to expand the standards to those. So there's a couple of different ways you could do that. One is you could evolve the existing standards. The other one is start from scratch, build something to address that. And so we basically took the latter approach. Um, so with Swordfish, we basically said, OK, um, taking all of those things into account, as well as you know, what are we, you know, what else can we do? Um, I said start from scratch, but we didn't really start from scratch because we couldn't start from scratch uh, completely and turn a new standard in nine months. I've already talked about us, you know, doing basically starting nine months ago and, and releasing a spec today. What we did instead was steal liberally from a bunch of different sources. And one of those sources was a spec called Redfish. Um, so some of you may have heard of Redfish. How many of you have heard? In, uh, okay, so. Um, so what Redfish is, is a, it's actually a spec that the DMTF organization put out. A lot of the same vendors um, involved in developing Swordfish were involved in developing Redfish. Redfish is a standard that DMTF came out with to do very similar objectives in the server management space initially, and then ex uh, plan to extend it. It initially came out a year ago, um, almost a year ago right now, uh, to uh, with base functionality in uh, replacing uh, IPMI for BMCs. That's the level of functionality came out with. But the base protocol infrastructure is RESTful um, with uh, JSON um, uh, uh, data transports and including uh, OData metadata as well. So it's... Um, we were able to basically take all of that, and I'll, talk, I'll show you a little bit more about, about all of that. So, um, but basically we were able to take all of that protocol level work that they've done, as well as all of those schemas they've defined about servers, because as we all know, a lot of storage is actually built using server components. Uh, so we basically took all of those and we just leveraged them directly. Um, and we extend, what we do with Swordfish is we just extend uh, uh, all of that Redfish uh, and focus exclusively on the what we call the storage services, uh, and that's what Swordfish is. Um, other things we did was we we stole uh, or leveraged, pick your pick your favorite term, um, work that was actually going on in SMIS. Um, so SMIS was actually working on simplified models that were much more client oriented. So some of those things that I talked about on the last slide around what can we do to be more client oriented, what can we do to uh, focus on um, getting those uh, uh, refactored APIs so that you know, somebody doesn't have to make the same call once, they can do it, or, or a thousand times they can make it once, you know, get it a lot more user centric, um, and simplify the models. We, we stole a lot of that. One of the other key features we've added into this, um, and this, this, is, this is big, is we've actually moved to a class of service-based uh, provisioning and monitoring model. And uh, so what that actually means is instead of, again, focusing on, this is very, very user-centric, 
um, rather than equipment and vendor centric is we've moved to a model where instead of focusing on uh, you know, you have to understand every single knob and widget and configuration. You can actually set it up so that the vendors can do it out of the box and then the storage administrator can figure it so that when uh, a, DevOps, a, De uh, a DevOps guy or your IT admin comes in and wants to configure the system, what he actually gets presented with is here's the class of service that someone else has configured for him. Uh, I just get capacity and whatever class of service you're, you're permitted to use, you just look at that and configure your capacity off that. You don't have to know anything about the underlying infrastructure. Um, and that's completely configurable for, uh, for your environment. Um, and that's done in a completely standard way, obviously. It's a standard API. And so then the vendors are able to differentiate all around that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we cover block file and object. Um, and then the other thing that this does is because we're working so tightly with Redfish, it covers very seamlessly the storage server and fabric together. So there's existing simple fabric models and we'll be working to extend those to cover storage fabrics. Um, Redfish is already working to extend those to cover networking fabrics. It's really going to give us something we've been trying to do for a long time in the standard space, a really true seamless, uh, standard API to cover your entire data center. Um, okay, so who's developing this? I talked a little bit about, you know, all the players really having a lot of overlap. Um, these companies are highlighted in blue down here, uh, or blue, purple. Uh, the, co the companies highlighted down in purple here are really have been the key players. I want to highlight a couple of things. Microsoft and VMware have really been very instrumental in this whole process from a client perspective. One of the issues we've had in, in when we developed SMIS and one of the reasons it kind of took a long time to get things really um, uh, stabilized and was it was largely driven by the vendors and it took time to get that, to get a lot of client engagement. We have a lot of client engagement up front. We'd really like a lot more input from clients, um, but uh, this has been very, very client driven uh, so far. Um, and as you can see, we ha we've had Broadcom, my company, Dell, EMC, uh, HP, HPE, sorry, Intel, um, and Intel bringing a lot of their input from their rack scale design architecture in as well. So that's got both a client and pro um, provider, both the client and vendor inputs, which is a really good perspective. Uh, it also has a lot of that server storage networking ecosystem input. Um, and then we have, we've had Nimble um, and, and then a couple of smaller players like Innova Development in as well, looking at it from an infrastructure perspective. So it's been a really good breadth. Um, and then also I'd highlight that most of these companies are also playing and key players in the companies that are developing the Redfish space. We have a lot of other companies here that have also been watching what's been going on. Uh, and uh, most of these companies are also companies that have been very active in developing SMIS and, and uh, so, but we'd, we'd love to have a lot more people come and engage and work with us on, you know, validating what we've done and expanding, um, expanding functionality, validating, you know, developing reference implementations, developing real implementations, and, and help working with us moving forward. Um, and by the way, we don't actually have to wait till the end for questions. If people do have questions, uh, we will take, I, I'm, I'm happy to take questions anytime we, as we go through. Um, it will probably also help me not have coughing fits as, as I go forward here. I, I, so uh, I, I guess I probably could have clarified that um, <laughs> up, up front. Um, all right, so what functionality did we include in V1? Um, you know, I, I keep saying, you know, yay, we did this in nine months. You're probably thinking, yeah, I probably didn't get much there. Um, because we leveraged so much stuff, we, got a, we actually got a ton of functionality in here. We actually have full block functionality, uh, provisioning, full provisioning with class of service controls, uh, volume mapping and masking, full replication capabilities, capacity and health metrics. And then we also put file system on top of that. So the file system leverages the entire block infrastructure uh, and then adds file system and file share schemas on top of it. Um, 
We've also got support for object drive storage. I know earlier I said we were going to do object store. This is not full object store. This is for object drive. And so for anyone who's not aware, there's another technical work group going in SNEA that is the object drive uh, storage technical work group. They just, they're in the process or have already released a spec for object drives. It's, it's out for public review right now. So if you haven't heard of this, go look at that. Um, and this uh, has support for the object drive storage uh, in it. And so um, if you're not aware of it, just go look at that. Those are, it's a pretty interesting um, specification for folks to, to go be aware of. Um, <clears throat> okay. So diving down a little bit into what this stuff actually looks like. Um, before I do that, any questions on what we've covered so far? All right. So uh, what does this stuff actually look like? Uh, we've talked a little bit about this being REST-based uh, and then using JSON and then OData uh, metadata extensions as well. Um, so, and we also talked about it leveraging Redfish. So the way this is actually structured is, and, and what we've done is it uses this, the same Redfish resource. Uh, we've just extended using the Redfish resource now. So this slide and the next slide basically talk a little bit about how, directly how we've done that as, a, a, as well as starting to lead in a little bit to uh, what a Swordfish implementation actually will look, will look like. Um, so this is a slide we've leveraged from, <laughs> from Redfish. So if you see any of the Redfish uh, presentations, you'll see this slide there. Um, so Redfish is, is fundamentally structured um, in, uh, in, in this hierarchy. So there's this notion called collections um, and with uh, entities inside them. So that's, that's the terminology there. Uh, and the primary structure uh, that they use is you for, um, uh, and there's a, there's a few more things that have started to show up now, but the, the primary structure is you have systems, which is the logical structure for a, for a computer system, and then the chassis, which is the physical part of the system. And then the managers over, I'm, point, I'm pointing to my screen, isn't that really helpful? Um, <laughs> uh, and then the, man, the, the manager, uh, Sarah Pointer, Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, and then there's a, yeah, yay, a green pointer. Um, uh, um, the manager's pointer over here is where you will either see functionality for a BMC or in our case where we will add things like uh, a software management infrastructure. So that's where we'll extend that. Um, and then there's other services here like session management, account management, schemas, and events. And so these things all hang off of what we call the service route. Um, so the collection is where you'll see, you'll go here and see uh, how many of those things exist. And the chat, you know, so this is the logical system. This is the, ch the physical system. Um, this, the, sh the distinction is pretty much that way. If, if you're quibbling why something's in one spot or another, it was, probably a multi-hour discussion as to why it should be one spot or another. And, um, you know, everything's not quite that clean, but, but it is where it is. Um, but we'll see over here exactly what you expect to see, model, serial number, inventory information, and then, um, and then uh, information like power and thermal and, and rack hierarchies and stuff or a chassis, okay? Um, and so what we've done with uh, Swordfish is we basically looked at that entire hierarchy and said, yep, we'll use that. And we added all the stuff that's in purple. And so in purple, we did a couple of things. One is we recognized that in some configurations, our storage systems are built entirely and exactly out of standard servers. And so some of these systems will, ha will be using exactly these storage systems, or these, these systems. But in some cases, store, we have storage systems that are very similar, um, but have custom hardware. And so there's a, also this logical construct that's called a storage system. 
Um, and those things are, exact, are, are very, very similar as well. Uh, but we basically have, the bulk of the, fo of the focus is actually in this, what we call the storage service. So the storage service is where you'll see all of what you expect to see a logical construct for storage. This is where you see, oh, sorry, um, you know, storage, you know, the volumes and the storage pools and the endpoints and groups and uh, and this is where we've added the class of service constructs and, and all of that. So again, you see, uh, you know, the collection that says how many of them there are, and this is where you see each in the details of each individual entry. Um, so, oh, so so one thing about cardinality of all of this is. Uh, for a Redfish implementation that's done on a BMC, what you might see is, uh, you know, one of each of these. For a, a storage, like a large-scale storage system, what you might see is uh, a storage service that has, uh, you know, it might, you, for the storage services, you might see, um, you know, a large number of storage services because that's the way the system is, is developed. You know, where we have, uh, this, is, this thing is just designed to be built on a, lar a much larger scale. Um, <clears throat> so these things, it's, it's a very, very highly scalable system. Uh, so we have a, a question up here where the, sorry, hang on. Oh, hold on just a sec for the mic. When you say class of a service, uh, could you give us some example of what kind of a class are you talk, uh, talking about? It is related to QS or is a or something like that? Okay, so the, the, the question about, you know, what, what do we mean by class of service? So a class of service is actually defined um, to be, a, I think we will, Oh, we'll get into that in, in a, a little bit have, and have uh, a few more details. But fundamentally, a class of service is devi defined to be based on a set of, uh, extending a set of, of uh, capabilities. And so uh, you get to define these capabilities. They can be based on um, ca uh, protection. They can be on capacity, on, on uh, uh, a bunch of a whole set of attributes that we've defined, but basically it could be performance related, it could be protection related, it could it could be availability related. Um, so uh, some people call this, you know, quality of service related, you know, quality of service instead of class of service. We've chosen to call it class of service. Um, and so I'll, I'll have when I get a little bit further in, I'll have um, some mockups that show um, a little bit more detailed examples. And so if I don't have uh, quite all the detail for you then let me know all right um, okay so we also talked about how we extend redfish um, this I want to highlight again um, so one of the things that we do when, when we redfish actually covers what we call local storage so when you have uh, storage attached to a local server, Redfish covers that notion. And so they have this, this notion of a volume that's got some set of attributes in it. Well, we, we also have a notion of a volume. And so we didn't want those to, to diverge at all. So what we've done is basically said, we will not diverge. Uh, instead, we extend that volume. We have all of those same attributes in there, and but when you move to Swordfish, you of necessity have a need for some additional attributes. And so the model that we have to work between the organizations is to extend that to include all of those additional attributes. Um, one of the things that we, we, didn't, we didn't include in our V1 release, but we will be including in, and developing and including in a later release is an implementer's guide that's very specific um, that includes details for implementers to talk about, you know, which specific attributes to include um, in uh, specific Im I I implementations, right? So our spec includes all of these things now. We will just be adding additional guidelines for um, when to use all of the attributes. Um, okay, so what does a Swordfish uh, system look like? 
uh, or can, can you see what a swordfish system looks like today? And the answer is yes. Um, even though we don't actually have any implementations, you can actually see what this looks like. Now, how do you do that? Um, so one of, the, one of our development tools for putting the spec together is we call mockups. Uh, and so this has actually helped us develop this a little bit more quickly. Uh, and some of this goes back to the fact that with uh, uh, the JSON infrastructure, we can actually develop, put together uh, uh, static views of what a system would look like in JSON and say, does this make sense, and yes or no, or modify it. And then, and instead of having to work entirely in schema. And so we, what we've developed are actually three different uh, sets of mockups. One that's actually, here's a small scale system, here's a large scale system that has everything, and here's a file system view. And so we've, we've actually used those as de both development tools, and we've released um, all, set, all three sets of our mockups um, as part of our, uh, well, they're actually out as part of all, all of our work in progress releases, but they'll be released as part of the spec bundle as well. Um, so that uh, you can get a good sense of what different, different configurations would look like. Um, <clears throat> so I'll show, give you a sense of uh, what sort of systems look like by actually using part of those, part of those work, that work. Um, so here we go. Uh, so here's, here's a little bit of the swordfish mockups. And for those in the back, you should sit in front. Um, uh, so, and as a note, all of the uh, slides are online, so you can actually, thanks, Marty. Uh, you can actually see this stuff. Um, you can download the slides. You can also, we actually have two different ways you can actually look at this, one of which is you can download the mockups, put them on your, on your own systems, and navigate through them. We're actually also putting all of these online at swordfish.mockable.io, uh, both in static form, as well as adding some uh, simulated interactions in a few areas so that well, you can actually look like you're uh, in, actively interacting with the system. Uh, so um, what you can actually do is interact with the system a little bit. So like I said, there's three different, there's three different uh, systems on here. And this actually shows you a little bit of the, of the service route. Um, so you'll see if this were um, just a, a small scale system, you wouldn't necessarily see all of these things. But you can see system, the storage, ser the storage systems and the storage services here, as well as the, some of those other elements we talked about. And uh, so we want to just navigate through. You'd basically you know, update your, the URL you're asking for at the top. And I navigate down into the storage service collection. And now I can see, hey, there's three of these things on here. Uh, so we move forward. We picked one. So, so what is what's actually in a storage service? And so here's all of those things we actually already talked about, right? So there's classes, class of service. There's volumes. There's pools. There's groups. Um, <clears throat> and then there's actually also points or pointers to uh, other resources uh, in, in the, that the storage service uh, references or, or lever uses. So things like the system and the chassis. So there's ways to say these are the relationships here. And so you can actually navigate around and, and uh, um, just m migrate your way around the system. So you never have to go um, on a system. You can actually just learn go into and navigate your way around and find all the relationships. You've never, you've, I still haven't made you go to a schema and you know, research anything. You can actually just point your browser at a system and navigate your way around and find everything. Right? This is completely different than interacting with uh, an SMIS-based system where you would have had to you know, go read a manual to find something. Um, all right, so what if I want to, and a file system, identical, except that now I've, I've also got a, uh, Oh, right, in, right in about here, I have to look. Right in here, I now have a file system link where I can go dig down in and see the details of the file systems. OK, so I actually want to do something. So let's say um, I want to discover something about my system, which is kind of what I've been doing. I've just been navigating around and discovering stuff, right? Let's say I want to discover something for a specific reason. So um, do I have space to? You know, do, what do I want to have space to do? Do I want to do I have space to say check the capacity in a storage pool? Um, so again, going back to the class of service, my I'm a DevOps guy, and my storage admin has told me 
that in a particular storage pool um, or with a particular class of service, and in this case, I, I'm in Boston and I have permission for anything in gold. So I've done a search in, because I know how to do, you know, fill appropriate search parameters. I, I know how to search for um, the storage pools that have the type of class of service for gold Boston. And uh, does that show up on you? Yeah. Or, or I happen to know that I'm looking for, you know, name special pool because the other one, the other search doesn't got truncated on this screen. Um, so I happen to know that I can search in special pool. So I go over to, I navigate my way down to special pool, and um, and uh, I can look at the capacity here, do appropriate calculations on it, and say, hey, look, I do have enough capacity here. And yay, I can go create a volume in this pool. So, so now I could actually go in and uh, do a, uh, an appropriate, it's a REST API, I can post to create a volume inside, you know, to, into this pool. And that's exactly how simple it is. I don't have to worry about what, what, uh, um, what array this is and what attributes it is or anything like that. It's already been all set up for me by the storage admin. Okay, so that's, um, I don't actually even have to worry about what vendor's equipment it is underneath either. either. Storage admin did all of that for me. All right, so um, that's a little bit about how everything works. I think we're down to just a couple, a few minutes left. Um, so where are we? Oh, I forgot this is a build slide. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yep. We, like I said, we just finished the V1.0 spec, released that this week. Um, we've had a bunch of interim releases through the years. Uh, through the year. SNEA.org slash swordfish will tell you all of the rest of this. If you're interested in participating, um, we would love to have you in several different ways. Join the group uh, and work with us on developing the spec. Uh, if, you're, you know, if you're looking at it outside the group, send feedback through the uh, portal. Um, <clears throat> we're also working on setting up a uh, storage management customer panel. Um, email storage management at snea.org for more information. And everyone a drone. Um, we are also going to be at Ignite next week. There will also be a uh, uh, customer event that we're working on. Our, uh, we have uh, registrations for folks to attend on Tuesday night at Ignite next week. Um, well, I think that's it. I'll leave it here. Questions? We have a. I have the microphone. Yes. Uh, you talked about an implementation guide. Do you define there the, the, the border between redfish and swordfish? Uh, yes. So, uh, a couple of things. One is um, with this first release, we have, we've actually put out a specification and uh, the beginning of a user's guide. So, um, we, we decided to focus on the user's guide first, and we'll be putting out an implementation guide later. So, the implementation guide targeted at the vendors, but uh, focusing on the users uh, and highlighting user uh, interaction for, for the users first. Um, what we put in the spec is actually focused on just the swordfish part and refer back in the spec um, with, and refer everybody else to say that's the redfish part. Um, what we actually expect to see from a client perspective uh, and a user perspective is that the difference between swordfish and redfish should be completely transparent. Um, and we actually have a, a station set up out here in, in the uh, mezzanine. mezzanine, thank you, uh, where we can actually walk you through a little bit and show you how, from a client perspective, from, that it is, should be completely transparent when you're interacting with swordfish versus redfish. Um, you know, and then I can show you the pieces that are swordfish versus redfish there, but from a client perspective, you shouldn't even, you shouldn't have, be able to tell at all. Uh, the other thing that we're doing to make it completely transparent is we're actually posting the schemas. We have JSON and CSDL schemas. We're actually posting those on the DMTF website. So even when you're interacting there, you don't have to come to SNEA versus DMTF when you're building the system um, to get them. You'll, they'll all be in one spot. 
Any other questions? Oh, come on. How far does the drone go at least? It's a mile, by the way. Uh, so I've got a question. Is the, is the standard somehow prepared or will be prepared for somehow managing uh, storage systems like RAID or distribute file systems like, like Ceph or something like that? Is this a part of your, of your work or will be, maybe? Uh, so I think the, the question was, uh, I'm sorry, can you don't have to repeat it. No, I, I didn't quite catch all the question. Can you? Okay, so the, my question was, is the standard uh, somehow prepared for, for managing and monitoring solutions like s such a right solution or distributed file systems, stuff like that? He's talking about what, is it data path Oh, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm. Like objects, you don't support objects. Oh, no, when, right, so in the first version we only included, um, block and file, but it is completely up to anybody coming in as to what extensions are added past that. Um, if we, ha I, I, we expect to add object, um, and in the last couple of days I've talked to folks who also want to look at potential extensions for SAF. Uh, we've, we've talked to folks who have uh, an intent to come in and add some extensions into file share space. Uh, but really, if we have uh, you know two or more vendors who have functionality that they want to add into a particular area, we're open to that. We have we already have a roadmap that says we want we're going to be adding uh, performance metrics. We're going to be adding a bunch of capabilities around events. Um, we have uh, fabric extensions. We we're going to be doing some collaboration with uh, DMTF in about. Uh, three or four areas, uh, so, but really any capability is fair game as long as we have two or more vendors or two or more companies, I shouldn't say, I keep saying vendors, but two or more companies that, that are interested in adding to the standard. Okay, thanks Rochelle.